We attacking better stand back. We attacking better stand back
Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. What's up, y'all? This is DJ Trey Mo, and welcome to Superstar KO. All right, let's get it in. Wanna play by yourself? Hit 1v1. You and a buddy? Hit 2v2. Or if you really trying to squad up, hit that 3v3, and let's get it popping.
Tonight, from Lincoln Financial Field in Philadelphia, it's Thursday Night Football on EA Sports. It's the Philadelphia Eagles taking on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The city of Philadelphia is one of rich history and passion, and you can always count on the ladder when you step inside Lincoln Financial Field. The scene in South Philly a few moments ago. Boy, the city of brotherly love is fired up. They're saying fly, Eagles, fly, as they get ready to match up with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles, you look at this Eagles team as they interplay here. They come in on a pretty good roll here, winners of three straight. On the other side of the field for the visiting Bucks, they come in pretty desperate here for a win as they've started the year 0-5. And it seems way too early to start talking about hot seats. But guess what? When a team is 0-5, people start wondering about their jobs. Set to go now in week six of the NFL season. And we are underway on EA Sports. From the six. And they'll get him down inside the 30 at the 27. And here come the Eagles on offense, and it's Jalen Hurts at the controls in his second season now out of Oklahoma. And there's a lot of good to watch in the game last week. He threw four touchdown passes. A little bit of concern throwing the two interceptions. Yeah, and the two picks. Yeah, you want the ratio really to be closer to three to one as opposed to the two to one that he had, but it is something to build on. They did get the win, didn't they? Yep. They'll start with the option. They'll have a first down past the 40. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. So a decent gain, but all for naught on the penalty. It's too bad, isn't it? They were feeling pretty good about it. Only people celebrating? The guys who just gave up that play. They'll fake the give to Sanders, and now Hurts. And he slides and covers up at the end as he's going to be able to pick up decent yardage. He'll get eight on the scramble there. It'll be second and a couple. Throwing from the gun, it's Hurts. Rolling to his right. And he can't find anywhere to go with it. And he goes down. Credit the sack to Vita Vea. But just two plays in, and Charles already their first sack defensively. Yeah, how about that? That didn't take long, did it? And now they look at third down, and that's another time to try and go and get the quarterback, too. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Oh, into a sea of defenders and intercepted. Carlton Davis picks it. And to the 40-yard line, that's where the return stops. They'll 
They'll come out throwing here on first down. Oh, he's going to air it out right away. And that is incomplete. Antonio Brown, the intended receiver. That'll bring up second down. So a glance here at the key inactives. It, it, there's other reasons, but this list, one of the reasons they've been struggling some this year. And one that they won't make excuses with, but everyone knows that this is the key reason. Without these players, it's made it very difficult for them this season. They battled, they've scrapped, but without those guys, hard to win games. Antonio Brown can wreak havoc in so many ways here. He's able to cause a P.I. penalty. He runs the defensive backs with such speed and power. I think it creates panic on their end. And a lot of times they just reach out and grab him. And that's the result there, a pass interference. And he's in. Touchdown, Buccaneers. Le'Veon Bell, his second touchdown on the season. And the Bucs on just two plays have taken the lead. Nice job of polishing off that drive, but all the credit there goes to that play prior. Yeah, it certainly does, because after that big play, I think resistance almost felt futile at that point, didn't it? And the very next play, they come right back, quick, fast, and in a hurry, and put it in the end zone. Extra point up and good by Suckup, and that makes the score 7-0. Following the touchdown now, it's Bradley Pinion on to kick this one away. Fielded just outside the goal line. Jalen Hurts in this offense trotting back out. And he'll look to rebound from the early interception that led to six points the other way. And when he threw the interception and he had to come to the sideline, I guarantee his first thought wasn't about the interception itself, but what could result. And I know he was thinking to himself, come on, defense, bail me out. Well, they weren't able to in this situation. Now he's got to go out and atone for it himself, but he can't force things. The numbers for Sanders last week, 17 carries, 72 yards. And now that he's playing a Thursday night game short week, you know he spent a lot of time in the trainer's room in the cold tub trying to get his legs back for this game. They'll say no gain on the play there, and now it'll be third down. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. Hurts. Looking for Watkins, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Andrew Adams. And it's a pick six. He brings it back to the house from Buccaneer TD. And this defense looking like they have come to play the pick six, and just like that, it's 13-0 early on. Well, go back with me to our training camp visits. What do we hear during these drills? Oh, pass. pass. Ball. Ball's in the air. And then my favorite. Oski. That's the interception. <laughs> that means everybody find someone to block. Block them legally. Stay on your feet. And they get it done. Touchdown. Extra point put through by Suckup. And that'll make the score 14 to zip. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And he'll be brought down at the 28-yard line. So the decision to bring it out of the end zone gets him three more. Already at the line, this Philly offense set to go. And they just had that pick six. I guess the only positive maybe of them returning that for a touchdown, this offense right back out onto the field to try to make up for it. I like that because now it doesn't give them a chance to go to the bench and really settle, you know, to sit there and kind of seethe over the idea that they turned the ball over previously. Right back out there, it's almost like hopping right back on the bike after falling over. Let's see if they can get the ball moving again. Well, we'll see if they can do it here. Now a toss left side into the hands of his tight end. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. A big play that time on the catch and run. And this offense needed something to try and seize the momentum a little bit. That might have been exactly what they needed. Now they have a chance to go downfield and score and cut into the lead. Hurts throw taken in by Watkins here. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. Brings up second and five. At the 
Here's Hurts to throw. Dancing to his left. And he'll slide to a halt here. Still a little shy of the first down marker. He'll wind up getting four there on his own, but it will leave him now with a third down situation. Hurts sets up to throw it. And he's got his man. It's the tight end, Goddard. And he is going to have an Eagles first down as they're able to convert by plenty there on third and one. From down at the 12, it's first and 10. Hurts a handoff to Sanders. And he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. That one good for 10 yards. And that'll make it second and a foot or so. Fourteen nothing to score. This is the NFL on EA Sports. It'll be Hurts on the option, and he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one yard line. So that was all you're looking for on a play like that. Get the first down and keep the drive moving. Yeah, it just looked to me like he just said to himself, I've got this, I'll take it, I'll pick it up, and let's keep moving. Get the first down, get a new set, and let's start over. And he'll actually lose a little bit of yardage here. Back to the two. That's going to go as a loss of one on first down. Back at the two now. Here's second and goal. Throwing his hurts. And this is going to be intercepted. Mike Edwards picks it off, and the Buccaneers are going to take possession here at their own three-yard line. Boy, so another interception, CD. It feels like he's starting to unravel a little bit. And as you would expect, still a work in progress here in his second season. He has to start ironing out some of these mistakes, though, because now his head coach, his offensive coaches, they have to evaluate whether you keep playing him and let him work through it, or you start thinking about going to his backup. this forward for about three at second down and that's frustrating for a defense because they've got them pinned down deep and on the first play they give up a run that keeps an offense on schedule Yeah, because three to four yards that's all you're looking for right there right that's absolutely perfect really as a play call you get three to four yards on first down that's what they talk about us all the time about being ahead of the chains or on target ahead of schedule they were after that run second down at seven Looking to throw. On the run, he'll let this go deep right side. And this a leaping effort, but it's knocked away and incomplete. There is something to a game plan. We're trying to keep a defense honest with a guy with that type of speed. You do so. Send him deep. Try to throw some air under it and hope you connect downfield. On that play, they run successful. They just gave up a sack there, and if I'm not mistaken, they gave up four last week, didn't they? Yes. And they're just looking really porous, aren't they? They really are, and I'm wondering if they're going to have to start thinking about keeping the tight end in, maybe a back, someone to help assist, because right now, the quarterback's been getting hit a lot in the last couple of games. Now he'll let it go on the run. Deep left side. Oh, this is taken in. It's complete. Pass the 20. And he'll take this into the end zone. Now, hold on here. We do have a flag down. So let's see what this is about. So that will wipe the six off the scoreboard. And you talk about dampening a celebration. That's a touchdown pass that's going to be called back because of the penalty. Here's another first and goal, but from a little further back this time following the penalty. Sanders. And he'll take it into the end zone for the Eagles touchdown. Miles Sanders with touchdown number eight on the year. And the Eagles are back within a score. It good on the extra point, and that'll cut the lead down to a touchdown. They got the ball in great field position. Play later. Boom. Now, after the touchdown, here's Elliott on the 
kick it away. Taking it about the one. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. So here are the Bucks to take over on offense. They've dropped five straight coming in. So right now cherishing this lead. And they've got the football as well. First and 10. Rolling to his left. And a flag comes in as that one falls incomplete. Well, let's see who this is on. So a costly penalty yardage-wise as that'll move the football down to the spot of the foul. And what the officials are looking for in these situations, whether you're playing the man or the ball, and if you're playing the man, you get a lot less leeway in terms of what's going to happen at the end of the play. But if you're looking for the football, it's less likely to draw the flag. Second and 10. Play fake. He'll look to throw. Forced out to his left. And that will be incomplete. Trying to dial up the long one way out there, but it'll be third down. Well, you most certainly don't want to go three and out here and give the football right back because your friend, Old Momentum, he's wondering if he should change sidelines about right now. And if you don't convert here, guess what? He's going to make the trek to the opposite side, and all of a sudden, you've got a battle on your hands. Escape, and he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. How about this? Fourth and long, and they're going to go for it. Oh, he fakes a spike. Boy, a real head scratcher there. And the Eagles are going to take over in great field position. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. They'll find the Heisman Trophy winner, Devontae Smith. And they'll get this one down to about the 20-yard line. And what a year Devontae Smith had at Alabama in 2020. The first wide receiver to win the Heisman since Desmond Howard in 1991 while he was at Michigan. The 10th overall pick of the Eagles, who traded up from number 12 to get it. He's reunited with his old quarterback, Jalen Hurts, from a few years back at Alabama. 117 catches last year, led all of major college football. Just what you want on a first down run. Call it eight yards, and it's second and two. On second and two, Hurts. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. Vita Vea able to take him down. It's a loss of three. This offense continues to shoot themselves in the foot. And here, another sack. All game long, we've seen missed assignments, which have led to turnovers, sacks. This group has now played well. Touchdown! Dallas got it. His fifth touchdown now on the year. And the Eagles are within an extra point of tying this thing up. Good with a PAT, and we are tied here in the second quarter. A drive there, just four plays. This one tied at 14 now as he sends this one away. The result, Philadelphia in the end zone. Fielded just outside the goal line. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. Now the Buccaneer offense set to take over again. And last time this unit was out here, costly turnover, and then that turned into six points. They've got to make amends. And how many times have we sat in meetings with coaches and they use the term complimentary football? <laughs> offense take care of the defense, defense take care of the offense. That didn't happen on the last possession. This is a chance for them to pick themselves back up and help their team. Yeah, we'll see if they can recoup and recover. Now, how about that play? He took a possible negative and turned it into positive yardage and slid down to avoid taking a big shot. Excellent job. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. He's going to take the first of their timeouts. So as they take it over, we step aside. So danger averted for the moment, but now here's a third and long. Back 
to throw. Steps away. Now he'll let it go on the run. Deep left side. And he's got it. What a catch on the sideline. A big play there just before halftime. We see this happen so often. If you're a defender, it's like watching a bad movie over and over. The pressure's good, forcing the quarterback out of the pocket. But it's a lot to ask for these defenders to stay plastered to receivers long enough. And sure enough, they let a man come open, and the connection leads to a big play. So barely time to catch our breath. Here's first and 10 just outside the red zone. Back to throw here. He's going to go up top for the end zone. And he's got his tight end, Howard. It's a Buccaneer touchdown. O.J. Howard, his first touchdown on the year. And the Bucs have taken the lead. And I believe they buzzed down. They're going to take another look at this play. touchdown originally and this will stay a touchdown after the video review so they had it right suck up for the extra point it's up and good and that'll make the score 21 14 just a four play drive that time and it's all finished off with a touchdown by Tampa Bay Now Pinion with a kickoff honors following the touchdown. Very short kick taken right at the 20. And they'll be set up pretty nicely here as they have it up to the 35-yard line. The Eagles offense is going to take over late in this first half. And with him trailing, there is still enough time to try to string a few plays together, maybe get into field goal range. But first down, Hurts. Out to the left there and complete to the tight end, Goddard. Now the Eagles will use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. Throwing again on second down, Hurts. He delivers another to Goddard, complete. And tackled down after a gain of three. Leaves him with one yard to go on third down. He'll fire it deep for Rager. It's caught inside the 25. And he takes it down deep into enemy territory. The Eagles will take their third and final timeout as they stop it with 16 seconds to go in half number one. And Goddard's got it. Touchdown, Eagles. Dallas Goddard as the first half is winding down. And the Eagles have a chance to tie the game here in the final seconds of the half. Elliott good on the extra point, and we are tied here in the second quarter. So that drive of four plays. A couple of teams locked into a good one here. 21 all the score as the kick's away. Taking it about the one. And it's a pretty good he'll get this up to the 29. Now a timeout taken. Perhaps a chance for one more quick play and then another timeout if they hurry. We'll see. Likely time for one final snap as they start out first and 10. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. And as he throws, he lost the football. It's loose. And it's picked up by the Eagles. And he brings it back. Can you believe it? An offensive disaster on the final play of the first half. They just had to hold on to the ball. Elliott Good with a PAT. And that will take us to the end of the first half of play. So we've reached, due to time constraints, we're moving forward in today's broadcast in the beginning of the third quarter. It's been a shootout so far. We'll see which defense can make the adjustments as we get back underway in the second half. And we'll see a return here from the end zone. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Out come the Buccaneers. They'll have it first to start in the third quarter. 
And let's just say they're going to be looking to start over on this drive. A few moments ago, they were in the exact situation, but their first play led to a fumble that was returned for six. Yeah, you definitely have to have a short memory to play in the NFL. No, bottled up fumble. It's out. It's loose. But it looks like a Buccaneer was able to come out. And yes, the Bucs have it. Tampa Bay keeps the possession. Fortunate to get that football back because trailing here in the second half, last thing they needed was to lose the possession. And the word I think of here is opportunity because it could have been lost there, their chance to score points. But the opportunity for the defense was to go ahead and really close this game down if they were able to get possession. And he'll let one go deep for Howard. And that's going to be incomplete. Good effort there, trying to take a shot, but it's third down. This defense is continuing to contest every deep ball that is thrown downfield. And look, it doesn't matter whether you're playing man or zone, eventually that becomes man on man. And you've got to trust yourself and go up at that moment of truth and make a play on the football. Now on the run, he'll throw it back deep over the middle. And that almost intercepted. Oh, they would have loved to have their first pick of the game right there, but at least it does get them to fourth down. I'm sure this isn't a novel thought, but maybe run some simpler routes instead of trying to get it all back in one shot. Defense certainly appears to be ready for him. Try and get it back little by little instead of in big chunks. Airing this one out for Evans. A fight for it, and this is caught. It's caught indeed. An incredible play there on fourth down in their own territory. So now then, the big play has them all the way inside the 30 now, first and 10. Play action. They'll throw. Looking for the end zone. And that went a little too high as it's knocked away and incomplete. Similar to a shooter in basketball who just connected on the previous shot. They run another set for him on the next play. Now we had a guy who made the catch. They tried to get the big one downfield, but came up empty. The play action fake. They'll look to throw. Pass incomplete, but the flag in the backfield, and this might be a roughing call. I think you'd agree that looked like the right call from up here. No doubt about it. What everyone has to understand is that the officials are going to be right on the play each and every time. You may not like the call, but they're usually spot on. Zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. Quarterbacking 101. Never force the ball into double coverage, especially not this close to the goal line. The windows are so tight, you just don't want to force it in there because it could be tipped up and picked off. And Evans hauls it in. Touchdown, Bucks. Mike Evans. His sixth touchdown of the season. And the Buccaneers are an extra point away from tying up this football game. Extra point up and good by Sucka. And that will tie our game here in the third. So this drive spans seven plays. And it ends with a touchdown for the Bucs. So we're right back where we started. All even as the kick's away. Taken in at the three. And a good effort on the return there. Gets him across the 30, up to the 33. The Eagles offense sent to begin their next drive. Their halftime lead now evaporated. We're back to level following that touchdown a moment ago. And that shouldn't change the mindset a whole lot from an offensive perspective because they already knew this was going to be a hard-fought game. Now they just need to go out, execute their game plan, and keep moving. On second and nine, Hurts. He'll fire it deep for Rager. And that will be incomplete. Tried to dial up the long one way out there, but it'll be third down. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. They'll set up to throw. Step, but he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. Devin White in there to get him for a loss of nine yards, and that also leads to fourth down. The Eagles send out their punter now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. 
And the win last week punted four times as this one's away. With it is Brown. Now after the punt on that play, we've got a man down on the field. While the training staff takes a peek, we'll take a break. The Bucks offense set to begin their next possession. The last possession, these guys were able to tie the game with a touchdown. Now they'll have a chance to move out in front. Yeah, let's give a big assist to the defense who got the ball back. The special teams went out there, handled things. They've got it. They've got momentum. I know they're eager to get out there and put it on display. Third quarter, all tied up. This is second and ten. They'll set up a throw, buying time to his left. That's to Evans, and what a nice catch that is. And they're able to work this to the 25 before it's all said and done. A big play that time through the air, 36 yards. They'll look to throw now on first down. Flush to his right, letting one go deep for the end zone. And he pulls it in for the Buccaneer touchdown. Ronald Jones, his fifth touchdown now on the year. And the Buccaneers have scored again in this third quarter, this time to move out in front. Showed some of his improv skills there, getting flushed out of the pocket. And now, of course, all scoring plays are reviewed, and I think they're going to take an extra long look at this one. They're taking a peek at whether or not those feet were in bounds, and obviously a big call here in the end zone. And not just the feet. How about the hands? How is the ball possessed while the feet are hopefully getting down in bounds? That's what they're trying to look at to see if it all comes together. It's up and good, and they jump back ahead, 35-28. So they only needed three plays on that drive. And it's all finished off with a touchdown by Tampa Bay. And following the touchdown now, it's Bradley Pinion on to kick this one away. This taken in at the goal line. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. And out now come the Eagles. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. And he is out of bounds right around the 34. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. His position, and he's listed as a tight end, but he certainly doesn't run like one, and that's what we're seeing more and more coming into the league. Those guys who can run, make plays after the catch, and gain that additional yardage. And using that speed there to turn it into a pretty nice little game. A good gain on first, has him set up with second and just a couple of inches now from the 29. Running right, here's Sanders, and he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. They go backwards there two yards, and second and one is now third and three. He'll look to throw. Complete to Sanders. And he is going to have an Eagles first down, and he was able to get it by plenty. A gain of eight on third and three. Two first downs have him up near midfield now on first and ten. They'll run. It's Sanders. And he'll be brought down right at midfield after a gain of only a couple. One quarter remains here in this Thursday night matchup. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. And for the fourth time tonight, it's an interception. 
It's Devin White, the linebacker. And the Bucs will have solid field position here as they take over at their 45-yard line. Well, CD, I know it's just his second year in the league as a quarterback, but that's going to be one when he flips on the tape. He's like, ah, I shouldn't have thrown that ball. No doubt about it, and his coaching staff will be emphatic about he shouldn't have thrown that ball. But remember, second year, as you noted. And he can't find anywhere to go with it. And he goes down. Protection has been a problem all night long as they come up facing second and a bundle. No, he didn't spike it. He faked it. He'll let one go deep for Howard. And that's going to wind up incomplete. However, we do have a flag down. Let's check in with our referee. So pass interference the call, and that does not look to be going over too well on the defensive side. Or on their sideline, because I believe their head coach is saying right now, hey, you've got to call that both ways. Eluding the pressure right. He's going to take a shot for the end zone, and it'll be incomplete. Good job staying with him defensively, and it'll bring up second down. Finally, a good play there defensively on the deep ball. The secondary has had its struggles this entire game. Offensively, they've had their way with them. He'll try again with the arm here on second down. On the move to his left. And Evans hauls it in. Touchdown, Bucks. Mike Evans with his second touchdown of the game, number seven on the year. And the Bucs might be headed to the win column for the first time in 2021 as they add on to their lead. They have to love seeing that from their young quarterback here in the fourth quarter, able to further that lead with a touchdown pass. He didn't go turtle, did he? And you know what I mean by that. I had an old coach used to say all the time, hey, when we have a lead late, don't just tuck in and try to ride it out. Go out and play and extend the lead. And that's what he did. Extra point put through by Suckup. And the lead now up to 14. Now Pinion with a kickoff honors following the touchdown. Fielded right around the eight. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Philadelphia getting set to take the field. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack them here. The improv on the scramble there gets him six, and it'll be second down. Now back to throw. And that one off the mark behind him. Incomplete. Another throw there off the mark. And obviously he's battled all of the interceptions. Things just haven't been true to form for him. I don't know. What do you think's going on out there, CD? That's a great question. And my suspicion is he's been coached really well to not show that he's having a problem. You know, they always tell you, no matter what, you keep throwing the football with confidence. Well, we're not seeing a confident thrower right now. He's off balance, the passing game's off balance, and the defense is taking advantage. That'll be caught, it's Rager. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. All right, this is the time of the game where they're down a couple of scores. And they've really got to get some yards in chunks. And they know the defense doesn't want to give those up. But they've got to find a way to take them anyway. Now the question is, can they string a few of those together? That catch good for only a couple. That was a nice throw out there to the flat. But they defended that pretty well. The hope is to go ahead and put it on him so he can turn and get upfield and gain additional yardage. There just wasn't anywhere to go on that play. Hurts gets this to Sanders. And he'll go down here at the 35-yard line. But correct me if I'm wrong, yeah, you're down two scores. I don't think you need to rush just yet, but you can't take your time either. Yeah, even if you don't want to commit to full two-minute offense, you have to up the tempo, up the urgency. Maybe you're starting to call two plays in a huddle each time you snap the ball. Here's a pass swung out left to his running back. The first down screen pass, good for five. You got the big lead defensively. 
willing to give him that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle him after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. Hurts throw complete there to Smith. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down. Executed it to perfection. Hurts fumbles it. And it's picked up by the Buccaneers. And the return comes to a halt right at the 44-yard line. Brandon, I don't want to violate any of our broadcasting rules by declaring a game over before it's over. But that one, that puts them in real jeopardy there. Absolutely. It was a two-possession game. It is a two-possession game at this stage in the fourth. They needed points out of that drop. And obviously now, no chance at all to get those points that they so desperately needed. The Bucks' offense set to begin their next possession. And they sit in a good spot, having the ball back after the fumble recovery and up two scores in the fourth quarter. Out to it, and he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. And I mean, a loss of seven on the sack, and it brings up second. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So it's Buccaneer football as we welcome you back. And you'd have to figure they're just looking to burn these final two minutes away and get out of here with a victory. Going to air it out deep for Gronkowski. On oh, the throw led him too much that time. It's incomplete. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. He'll drop to throw. Letting one go deep here for Gronk. A high throw there as this is knocked away, down to the ground and incomplete. Fair to say the secondary play, whichever side you're on, hasn't really been a glowing exhibition so far, but a nice job there to prevent a long completion. I agree with you, but at some point, someone had to make a play and try and stop this exhibition of almost speed racing that we've been watching, huh? Yeah, it has been quarterback and receiver dominated. Now on fourth down here, that pass knocked away and incomplete. Bruce Arians takes a shot there, but his guys come up empty. And the Eagles are going to take over in great field position. They'll throw on first down with Hurts. That swung out wide to Sanders. On a man down, and it's Sanders. While the training staff works on him, we'll step aside and be right back. From the 35 on second down, Hurts. There he goes, right side. And it's a pick six. He brings it back to the house for a Buccaneer TD. And that one will pretty much erase any hopes of a fourth quarter comeback. With emphasis, interception, return for touchdown. Door closed, locked, reinforced. Suck up for the extra point. And the lead now to three touchdowns at 21 points. So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. This one fielded at the five. And it's a pretty good return here, so he'll get this up to the 29. Here's the Philadelphia offensive unit now as they head out to take over possession. Remember, they have won three straight, but getting to four straight does not appear to be in the cards as they are in a big fourth quarter hole. After the pick six, they go right back to the air. And they'll get this underneath to Scott. Now they got to get to the line quickly. To throw again on second down. Hurts. This ball complete to Rager. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. 
So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. That incompletion is not a surprise with the way that this one has gone and the frustration of body language is evident everywhere. This team, they've really been put through the ringer in this one. Wide open is Watkins. He's got him. And he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. On first and 10, it's Hurts. Going for it all. And this is caught in the end zone by Jalen Rager. Touchdown, Eagles. Jalen Rager, his second touchdown on the season. And the Eagles have got it back to a two-score game here in the fourth. And now it appears that the referee's been buzzed, and we'll get a review. And this being inside two minutes of play, everything coming from up above. They're taking a peek at whether or not those feet were in bounds, and obviously a big call here in the end zone. And not just the feet. How about the hands? How is the ball possessed while the feet are hopefully getting down in bounds? That's what they're trying to look at to see if the ball comes together. So the folks in New York just going to wind up confirming what the official saw as this play will stand as is. Elliott good on the extra point, and the lead will be cut down to 14. So that drive spanned five plays, and it was kicked off by an Eagles touchdown. And this is going to be recovered by the hand team. And they should just about put a camera on this one. They knew they needed a miracle. They had to have that onside kick. to the leather on that one. Their chances of getting that done, slim and none. And I do believe we saw Slim just leave the door, didn't we? We did indeed. I think we're down to none. Flushed out right. On the run, he'll let this go deep right side. And this nearly an interception, but it's incomplete. Well, a turnover really would have helped him there, but not to be. That one looks like he'll throw here. Dancing to his left. There goes a deep ball in zone. And Evans hauls it in. Touchdown, Bucks. Mike Evans, 45 yards. And the Bucks add on to their lead, and they appear poised to break this long losing streak. He has really settled in throwing the football, and that touchdown here in the fourth quarter gives him a pretty comfortable cushion. He may be a rookie. But he's playing like fourth quarter, and the cue being is easy. How about this guy? Youngster, not worried about anything, just cutting it loose and having fun. Extra point up and good by Sucka. And the lead now to three touchdowns at 21. Following the touchdown now, it's Bradley Pinion on to kick this one away. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And they'll get him down right at the 25-yard line, so the same result had he opted for the touchback. Already at the line, this Philly offense set to go. This is just an exercise in futility. Do you, do you even bother running a play here offensively? I wouldn't, because... Now is not going to erase what's happened during the game. So after it's over, you're going to go to the film, find out where the game was really lost. But this is not a situation now where you're going to make up for anything. We'll see what they do here. One final shot. They'll look to throw. He's going to let it fly. And that will be incomplete. As time has run out on this football game. A big offensive explosion help leading them to victory. And the defensive guys, they're just saying, hey, put those points up every week. We'll just keep winning. They will gratefully accept them, won't they? It makes their job that much easier when they're scoring that many points. Allows them to play with a totally different style and a different flow. 
So for Tampa Bay, it'll be a much happier locker room here as they get that first win after five straight losses to start the year. And they'll get the weekend off now as they get a little extra time to prepare to face the Chicago Bears. Meanwhile, for Philadelphia, the loss here will move them back to 500. Fellas, we've got to have a great practice today. There's no other option. We've got 17 weeks. We strap it up and we get better each week. This is All right, so let's get at it. Shut up! Bronco 80! Gentlemen, achieving our goals starts right here on the practice field. I can't stress that enough. You all know we have lofty goals for this season.
today. From Raymond James Stadium in Tampa, Florida. It's week seven of the NFL on EA Sports. It's the Tampa Bay Buccaneers taking on the Chicago Bears. Still a bit warm here in Florida, but really all things considered, a wonderful fall afternoon for football here in Tampa at Raymond James Stadium. Just a short time ago, the Buccaneers emerging from their tunnel to the roar of this frenzied crowd here in the Sunshine State. And we're in the big ship, and fittingly, everyone here ready to do battle as Tampa Bay gets ready to match up with the Chicago Bears. Hi again, everyone. Brandon Gordon alongside Charles Davis. And Charles, you take a look at this Buccaneer ball club. They were winners last time out, so they'll be looking, Charles, to make it two in a row. And what I enjoyed when I watched their game tape and their victory last week is they put it together in every phase. Good offense, good defense, and some key plays on special teams. Let's see if they can get that second win in a row. Meanwhile, for our visitors, the Bears, they were losers their last time out. They're going to try to get back in the win column, but obviously they're going to have to do that in a hostile environment. And sometimes that actually works to your advantage. Now you've got to band together your team, the us against the world mentality. Let's see if they can use it and get a victory. And week seven is underway on EA Sports. And no run back on the opening kickoff. It'll come out to the 25. The Bears offense ready to go to work here for the first time, leading him out the 11th overall pick of the 2021 draft, Justin Fields out of Ohio State. He had the numbers of a game last week that if you win, you talk about it being a gritty guy, managing the game, getting it done. But they lost. So obviously, two interceptions, one touchdown pass, that's not going to be good enough. Got to get that changed around. On first down, it's Fields. Rolling to his left. And he'll protect himself at the end here as he winds up getting pretty decent yardage. He'll get 10 there all on his own, but it'll be second down. Partner, he was going through his progressions. Not there, not there. After about the third one, he decided he better pull it down and run for it. And he slides down and avoids the hit for good measure. And his throw here is incomplete. David Montgomery, the target out of the backfield. And it's third down. So a glance here at the key inactives. It, it, there's other reasons, but this list, one of the reasons they've been struggling some this year. And one that they won't make excuses with, but everyone knows that this is the key reason. Without these players, it's made it very difficult for them this season. They've battled, they've scrapped, but without those guys, hard to win games. Tough sledding. They lose a yard there on third. So on fourth down, on is the punter, Pat O'Donnell, to kick it away. Back deep, Antonio Brown. He punted four times in the loss last week as he gets this one away here. It'll be a 39-yard punt, no return. And the Bucs will get ready to go on offense. Let's go. 
They'll try and start this drive in the air. Forced out to his left. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. Well, we always talk about how you've got to be quick when you go through your progressions, and here's another prime example. Trying to look downfield, he was standing in the pocket, but just couldn't find anyone open, could he? No, not enough time. They hit him and forced that incompletion. Well, he'll let one go deep for Howard. And that's going to be incomplete. Good effort there, trying to take a shot, but it's third down. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. They'll drop the throw. He'll buy some time right. On the run, he'll let this go deep right side. And that is caught, one-handed. Oh, my God, The ball comes out, but this will fortunately wind up out of bounds. You can almost see inside his face mask there, the look of relief. He coughed it up, but it goes out of bounds. They keep it. Someone carrying around the lucky horseshoe, aren't they? If I were him, I'd go out and play the lottery after that one. A very fortunate man. And they're operating in plus territory here. They're thinking points. Definitely don't want to lose the football at this juncture. Oh, he fakes a spike. Escaping the pressure right. And that nearly an interception here on this opening drive, but he gets a reprieve. It's third down. They're going to look to throw. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. And they're going to at least line up to go for it here on fourth down. They'll look to throw here. And brought in by Bray. And he's not able to get away. He is stopped well, well short of a first down. The Bucks try it on fourth down, but come up empty. And the Bears will get the football back. To Montgomery to begin the drive. Montgomery hit, and the ball is loose. And it's picked up by the Buccaneers. So they've got the football, and they'll start right on the edge of the red zone at the 20-yard line. And that one quickly went from a big play for the offense, I thought he may go the distance, to a big play for the defense. And how about the emotions for the defense on that play? It broke big. And now, as with every potential turnover, they're going to take a second look at this just to make sure. So that one overturned. They say the knee was down, and that will not be ruled a fumble. They'll start on the ground with Montgomery. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. This defense for the Buccaneers, they have certainly had their struggles to start the season, but they put it all together in getting that first victory a week ago. And one of the key things you always look for when you're evaluating a defense is how opportunistic are they? How many takeaways do they get per game? And how about last week's game? That number, six. Absolutely phenomenal performance. They were on top of their game right from the first snap. First down, here's the run with Montgomery. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. Usually we see runs like this as the defense breaks down later in the game, but this guy is setting the tone early, running through all types of tackles and putting the defense back on its heels. On first and 10, here's Fields. And that nearly intercepted. Oh, the free safety roaming into position, almost had it, but it's second down. They've given up a few first downs on this drive, but getting the incompletion there, that should give them... And he lost the football, and the Buccaneers have it. Whenever I see a team turn it over on back-to-back -back drives, fumbles on their last two, I know one person's blood pressure who is starting to rise, and that's the head coach. Absolutely. And when's it going to go down? When they stop fumbling? <laughs> <laughs> when they stop fumbling and after he's assessed the game film, and only if they manage to win the game. Tampa Bay, they're getting... And now before the ball changes hands, they're going to take a look at this just to make sure that they have it right. Now the question, was the knee in fact down before this ball comes loose? And is the video convincing enough to overturn it? A lot of factors here. Remember, you also need clear possession of football afterwards. This is a tough one to overturn.
that challenge a successful one. So possession still theirs, but now they face a third down. Following the fumble recovery, Fields. Well, this is going to depend on the spot, but it, it's not a very generous one. He looks to be about a yard or so short. Well, they stopped him shy of the marker, thought they were bringing up fourth down, and then that penalty. Let's face it, they thought they had bent, but could absorb that, right? Instead, they broke as a result of their own penalty. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off at the 17. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. So problems with Aaron passing continuing. Remember, he threw two picks in the loss last week and now another here in this first quarter. And sometimes, partner, this is the result of a quarterback who's simply trying to do too much. Feels like he's trying to make up for what he did last week, and he can't do it all on one throw. Being chased out left. Airing this one out for Evans. And this is incomplete. Well played defensively, nearly had the interception, but it's second down. Whenever you see a quarterback break contain, just think to yourself, the receivers on that side of the field, their number one job, make sure they get in his sight line so he can try and find someone downfield. Guys on the backside, make sure you don't give up the deep ball. They tried it there. They weren't able to connect. He's going deep for Brown. And that will be incomplete. Tried to dial up the long one way out there, but it'll be third down. And I think they'd be well served to take that type of a physical approach against him the rest of the game. He's had his way so far, but on that last one, that worked quite well for the defense. On third down, he'll drop to throw. Airing this one out for Evans. They got his man complete. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. A big connection on that one, 38 yards. And that one hurts defensively. They force him into third and long, had the advantage, yet they give up the big play right there. Yeah, their offense was already warming up on the sideline, ready to come out. So much for that three and out. So the big play gets him across midfield now for first and ten. Again, he'll drop to throw. Oh, he's going to let this go for the end zone. And this one almost intercepted. Had a chance to come down with it in the end zone, but could not hang on. They'll look to throw again. Flush to his right. Aaron, this one out for Evans. Got a man, it's caught inside the 10. And he gets it all the way down inside the 10 and mark him at the five. A big play that time through the air. 39 yards. We're scoreless after one. Five yards from the end zone, first and goal. Back to throw again. And it's intercepted at the goal line. Picked off by Jalen Johnson. And the Bears are going to get the football back at their own 17. Defensively that time, they were in zone coverage. As a rookie QB, what lesson can you learn there? Well, understand this. You saw zone in college, and the defensive backs reacted, but they don't react like they do on this level. So when they're in zone and they see the ball coming to them, they'll react at least a half a second faster. You've got to know where you want to go with the ball and be decisive with it. Otherwise, the end result can be something you don't like. They brought the blitz that time, and I thought they were going to get to him, but instead, he flipped it on its ear and ended up picking up positive yardage. I thought he was dead to rights, but you are exactly correct, sir. Able to turn that into a positive game. Fields on first down. Robinson's got it. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. That looked like a pretty good route combination there because you've got to find a way to clear the guy running the drag because when you do, you just put the ball on him and then let him run. He's got some space. They'll contain him to just four. Second down. 
Oh, it's time to give a little credit there to the defense. They played that very well because it was a drag route, and he ran a little shallower than normal as he worked straight across the field. He was hoping he'd get lost behind the defensive line, but once he made the catch, nowhere to turn up field and gain any yardage. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Back to throw. Fields. Throw left side complete. That's Williams. And to the 36-yard line, taken down there after getting eight yards. A give to Montgomery out of the gun. And he's going to get it down to the 33-yard line here. Second and two is prime time for a little bit of a gamble, isn't it? Open up the playbook, go play action, toss that bad boy deep. But in this situation, go ahead and give it to your back. Let him pick up a first down, keep the sticks moving. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. No gain on the play there. Second down. Second quarter, two minutes to go. Tie ball game. We remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll send you across state to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman will have all the stats and all the scores from games going on during another busy Sunday in the National Football League. I'm oh, not sure he saw the linebacker there as that's batted down and incomplete. It's been a pretty long drive. This will be play number nine, and they need 10 yards out of it on third. This one incomplete, probably should have been picked. A little nonchalant with the throw to the safety valve, but it's fourth down. And Santos able to put this one up and through. It's good, and it's 3-0. The Bears hit the scoreboard first. So the turnover leads to points as they add three there. Yeah, what a sequence there and a nice one for them. They forced the interception, put together a little drive, and then come away with three points. Nothing to it, partner. Just do it. And he won't quite make it to the 25. Here comes the field general leading his offense back out there for the next possession. And he comes out on the heels of an interception he threw last time they had the ball. Yeah, and you know, the quarterbacks that I know that are the best ones, the ones that really know how to lead their team, they tell them, that's on me. That's my bad. Let's go back out there and move ahead again, guys. We can get this done. One good thing for him, it did only lead to three points and not a touchdown after that turnover. Big thanks to the defense. Gronk so tough to cover, sometimes a flag is going to come out. His size and his ability create a lot of these pass interference calls. If you're trying to go through him to get to the ball, that's almost impossible, and he benefits on the play. Going to throw deep for the end zone, and a dangerous throw there as that's knocked down and incomplete. I believe I'm following their logic. Take the big shot downfield, loosen things up. You're hoping to get some points on the board before the half. Maybe now you come back and throw some underneath stuff in order to... And he's going to go down here, a sack. They push him back to the 34. The long Nichols. It'll go as a loss of about eight as he gets in there to drop him. The chance of wasting this great starting field position, a real threat. This is third and long. Going to air it out deep for Gronkowski. And this will be incomplete. Both players with a shot at it that time, but neither coming away with it. This secondary has been roasted in this. Measure revenge there. Nice play. Looking to throw. Oh, he's thinking end zone for Evans. And oh, it'll be intercepted. Picked up by the former first rounder, Artie Burns. And the First down, Fields. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. Well, when you've got a tight end who can run, you've got to give him a shot to unlock the defense. Want to see what they can get. Taking the big shot downfield. That one winds up incomplete. Fields throw there, complete to Mooney. Now the Bears going to call the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half.
Third and two, Fields. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Graham. Now the Bears going to use the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 35 seconds to go in quarter number two. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. To throw his fields. Oh, the Buccaneer pressure too much. Down he goes. The sack by the Super Bowl champion and pro bowler Jason Pierre-Paul. They don't want to repeat a first down. They'll keep it on the ground. And this will go as a short gain on what will be the final act of this first half. The second half upon us sooner than we bargained for. Week seven, second half. Let's do it. Set to resume. Here we go with the second half. The Bears holding the lead and ready to receive the kick. And he'll go down as this drive will start at the 25-yard line. Out come the Buccaneers. They'll have it first to start in the third quarter. And they're on the losing end of things here. Well, what do they need to do if they're going to turn things around, CD? Partner, it's awfully close to being a must drive here, I think, for them. Because I think a touchdown here in this opening drive is something they absolutely have to have. They only managed three points in the first half. They know that's not going to get it done. So without adding pressure to them, they already a fight for it. And this is caught. What a catch. A big play that time for Tampa Bay. There's no doubt in my mind that not many guys in this league have had the impact that he's had here in the first half of the season. He's been a big play guy from the word go and continues to be one with another one right there. So now then, the big play has him all the way inside the 30 now, first and 10. Back to throw. He's going to let it go deep for the end zone. And this one almost intercepted. Had a chance to come down with it in the end zone, but could not hang on. And second and ten, he'll look to throw again. Eluding the pressure right. And oh, that one going to right up incomplete. Nearly an interception in the end zone. Probably should have been. Third down coming up. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions. Have him looking at third and ten. Steps away to his left. He's going to go up top for the end zone. And he's got Gronkowski. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. Rob Gronkowski. His first touchdown on the year. And the Bucs have taken the lead. Solid response that time by a young quarterback. Last drive interception, this drive the touchdown pass. I like how you described it solid because you don't get extra kudos for bouncing back if you're going. And we remember, of course, all scoring plays need to be verified upstairs. And I think they're going to at least take a look at this. They're taking a peek at whether or not those feet were in bounds, and obviously a big call here in the end zone. And not just the feet. How about the hands? How is the ball possessed while the feet are hopefully getting down in bounds? That's what they're trying to look at to see if it all comes together. touchdown originally and this will stay a touchdown after the video review so they had it right Ryan suck up on for the point after and this is up and good to make it 7-3 a drive there of just four plays and it ends with a touchdown for the Bucks. Now Pinion with a kickoff honors following the touchdown. And here's Jakeem Grant from his end zone. And they will wrangle him down a couple yards shy of the 30. The Bears offense ready to go for their next drive. 
And they'll be working from behind now following the touchdown a moment ago on the opening drive of the half. I think the guys right now, as they go out on offense, they're zeroing in on one big key. They don't have to do anything differently just because they're down on the scoreboard now. The intent, still the same in what they plan to do on offense. On second and nine, Fields. They'll set up the screen to Montgomery. So mark off the yardage for roughing the passer. And I've seen this before. On a screen pass, not only are you rushing the passer, you're rushing him deeper than normal. And I think a little frustration kicks in at the end. You're going to hit him anyway when you shouldn't. The throw over the middle taken in. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. A big play there on the catch and run. Well, Charles looked like that had to be a mix up there defensively. You always question that type of confusion. They actually lost him in the middle of the field, gave him all sorts of room to run, and he took big time advantage of it. That's an error you just can't make on the defensive side of the ball. You get the sense that they're saying, we're not playing up to what we're capable of, and we're deep enough into the game that the early jitters are long gone, that they should now have some sense of continuity and be able to make some of these plays that they have not been doing so far. And just a couple yards there down to the 17. And the big fella stumped that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. And he's going to come up well short as they rally up to stop him at about the 16. They'll get only a yard out of that, and it'll bring up fourth down. How about that strategy there, Brandon? Third down, they just said, we've got faith in our tacklers. We'll give you the short stuff, and just decided to protect the sticks. So every time I hear fans telling me tackling's not a part of the game anymore, plays like that, I can clip and save and show them you have to tackle well if you want to be a good defense. So the response to that touchdown on the other side to begin the third quarter. Look, just three points, but still a response nonetheless. You're exactly right about that because I think you needed to answer back with something, even though it's not six. Just enough to send the message that says, hey, we're not going away. So here are the Bucs to take over on offense. They were victorious a week ago over Philadelphia. They lead here as well as they start out first and ten. Flushed out right. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. So after the sack, they'll come up on a still manageable second and 13. Oh, he didn't spike it. He faked it. He'll let one go deep for Howard. This ball tipped, and it's going to be incomplete. Fortunate maybe to get that back. It's third down. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. Boy, not deterred from those first two failed attempts. They're going to go a third time here on fourth down. Oh, he fakes a spike. He's going deep for Brown. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. A surprising move to go for it predictably, at least somewhat predictably. It doesn't pay off. And now possession will go over inside the 15-yard line. A little jet sweep to start the drive. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Let's just make this one succinct. Nice job there. All 11 guys on defense diagnosing the jet sweep and putting it down. Draw play. Fields gives to Montgomery. And he'll be stopped up after only a couple of yards as he gets it down to the five. Tough day. Tough sledding right there. And it's been that way the entire game. Not a whole lot of room to ramble for him. Yeah, you're right. It's been that way all afternoon. Didn't get... Yeah, he's got Moody in the end zone. Touchdown, Chicago. Jarnell Mooney, his fourth touchdown on the year. And the Bears have retaken the lead. They'll look to throw to the end zone, but it's incomplete. Popular down near the goal line. Quick 
slam. Nice job there to get in, knock it away. It was, and one of the other things you're concerned about when you throw that route is to make sure your offensive linemen use their leverage to get the hands of the defensive front down so you can throw it through that little bit of crowd and get it to the receiver. In this event, they did, but a nice play by the defender knocking it away. The Bucks ready to take over once again. And this offense last time turned it over, went for it on fourth, didn't get it. They're lucky, though, because no points against the team on the board, but we'll see how they respond. Yeah, they've got to get a lot of credit to their defensive teammates, don't they? They had their backs on that last series, and because they did so, that allows the coach to still stay aggressive on offense and maybe go for it again in a similar situation. I was going to say, maybe makes that offense feel good, but when you know you've got a defense making stands like that. Yeah, that'll loosen up things a little bit, won't it? Maybe it'll play a little bit better the next time you have the ball. Now on first down, he'll drop to throw it. Looking for the end zone. And that'll be incomplete. We do have a penalty flag down, however. Let's see what that's about. This home crowd, they're happy with that call. <laughs> I like the way you said happy there, right? The so-called good guys didn't get a call. They feel like it's been that way all afternoon. You feeling their pain? Under pressure, down he goes. Sacked at the 10. Roquan Smith. Came in there hard on the blitz and got him down nine yards behind the line of scrimmage. Back to throw now on second and ten. And in for the Buccaneers touchdown. Rob Gronkowski with two touchdowns on the season, both in this game. And the Buccaneers on just two plays have taken the lead. Those are the types of plays in these moments they were hoping for from this young rookie, able to put him up here in the fourth quarter. How about the kid? You just mentioned it, the fourth quarter. This is when you have to make those winning plays. That's what he just did. Doesn't ensure anything, but he certainly gave his team a heck of a chance, didn't he? So a big play coming now for the Bucs as they'll go for two. They'll try and run it in with Bell. And he'll get into the end zone. So now a field goal would only tie as they up their lead to three. So that effort gives him a three-point cushion and guarantees that a field goal going forward won't beat them. Yeah, that's really good strategy because that's all you care about. Not getting beat at this stage. At least give your team a fighting chance. And following the touchdown now, it's Bradley Pinion on to kick this one away. Jakeem Grant now to return. And able to get this out to the 25. At the line, prepping for their next drive, the Bears offense. And they will be looking to answer the touchdown. Their defense just surrendered. Still a good chunk of time remaining here in the fourth quarter and a chance to regain the lead in a tight one. And he gets this up just shy of the 30 to the 29 before he's out of bounds. Second and six. Fields now to throw. This one swung out to Montgomery. Another catch for him there on this drive, Brandon. It looks like they're going to utilize him out of the backfield any way they can. And that time, they pick up a first down. So now on defense, do you assign a man to him and try and cover him before he gets going? Oh, that one sailed a bit, but the catch is still made. And here we are in the fourth quarter, partner, and watch them drive for what would be a go-ahead touchdown. And you and I both know this is where you need a quarterback who can keep his cool back there. Not just for himself, but to keep the rest of the team relaxed, too. And that play will go nowhere. Losing yardage back near midfield at the 49. Not what they had in mind there. That's going to go as a loss of four. To the air again, Fields. That's caught by Montgomery. And a six-yard gain gets him right around the 43. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. You tackle him almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. And he'll go out of bounds right around the 40. They stop him for only three that time, and that'll bring up fourth down.
kick is not gonna get there. It's short and no good. The fourth quarter miss like that, there is no lonelier feeling than that kicker right now. As we all know, a lot of these games, they come down to special teams. And when that chance comes, you have to perform in order to help your team get over the top. Could have tied it. Instead, they remain down three. And this a leaping effort, but it's knocked away and incomplete. Here's second and ten. Back to throw here. On the run, he'll let this go deep right side. And that's going to be incomplete. Good effort there, trying to take a shot, but it's third down. This a very important drive, and that incompletion leads to a very important third down here if they're going to try and get the football back. Yeah, getting it back, absolutely crucial to their chances to try and win this game. I would expect a lot of pressure here. They can't afford to let them continue to get first downs and eat away at the clock. And unable to connect, incomplete. Now give them credit, they took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. Fair catch called for and made at the 16 or maybe the 17-yard line. No return, but it goes down as just a punt of 31 yards. And the Bears take over. The Bears offense ready to go for their next drive. Their defense accomplished step one of the mission. They forced the punt. Now they'll look to erase that deficit and take a fourth quarter lead. And he'll slide to a halt here, still a little shy of the first down marker. He'll get three yards on the scramble there at second down. Now Fields. And he can't find anywhere to go with it, and he goes down. Vita Vea breaking through to get the sack. And you hate to say it with a rookie quarterback. He's done some good things, but overall, looked a little bit overwhelmed back there, hasn't he? He certainly has. But in his defense, he hasn't had a lot of time to throw the football. You like the way I said that? In his defense. In his defense. I got it. Yeah. See what I did there? Yeah. He needs better protection, that's for sure. Here's Fields. And that's caught by Williams. And that's not nearly going to be enough. Stopped at the 22, and he needed plenty more. On fourth down, Fields. And that went a little too high as it's knocked away and incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Bucs are going to take over with excellent field position to boot. So now it may look bleak, but this one not over. They do have all three timeouts. Even at this point on the field, where it looks like, I mean, you're, you're really backed up, hold them to a field goal. That's the mantra right now. You hold them to a field goal, you still got a chance to take care of business on the other end. But you're right, the three timeouts are going to be key. How well they use them to preserve clock as well as stopping them, that's the key to giving them a chance to win. Back in the end zone, could he get his feet down? No, it's incomplete. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Now back to throw. And this one is incomplete. Well, so much for getting separation. No chance there. Locked down tight, forcing the incompletion on that attempt. He'll look to throw. Oh, no, he lost the football. And the offense will get this one back. Boy, that could have been catastrophic at this late stage of the game, but they avoid disaster. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. And they're going to fake it. He wants to, and he can't get a throw away. He's taken down. They pass up the three, fake it. It doesn't work. And the Bears will get the football back. He's back to throw. And his throw is incomplete. So he's unable to complete it there, and just not the game that you would expect from him. He's been off the mark, really, start to finish. Yeah, it makes you wonder what exactly is going on. Is he a little bit dinged up here, or is he just off just by a bit? Maybe he can get it back in this situation. He'll need to. Holding the offense. 
You need your wide receivers as blockers. Sometimes they get a hold. The big runs are often a result of what they do on the perimeter. In this case, got caught holding, and this one will come back. Here's a pass swung out left to his running back, and they'll bring him down at the 27-yard line. Now the Bears going to use the second of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with 65 seconds remaining. They'll look to throw. Pass complete, Graham. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. First down now, but the clock continues to move. Able to complete it to Montgomery. Breaks the tackle. He's got room to run. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. James Daniels, the guard, called for the penalty there. So following the hold, they're in a bit of a hole here with a first and 20. Back to throw. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. The Bears moving hastily in the hurry-up offense. He'll look to throw. And he will get a good amount of yardage back on second down, but the clock still runs. And with just inside of 10 seconds to go, they'll burn their final timeout. Nine seconds left. Back to throw. And now another turnover as this one's intercepted. It's Devin White, the linebacker. And they will set up shop in enemy territory at the 42-yard line. That time defensively looked like they showed quite a bit of pressure, but backed off, and it proved fruitful they get the pick. He went through all of his rules about getting rid of the ball quickly because he read blitz. He saw all those people stacked at the line of scrimmage, and then they fooled him by dropping pressure, and he's taken down. A bear sack. Bruce Irvin in there to make the sack on what will be the final act in this ball game. So time has run out on what will be a Tampa Bay victory, and they were spurred on by a strong performance in that fourth quarter as they held their opponents off the scoreboard. Everyone wants to pitch a shutout for the entire game, but when you throw one in the fourth quarter, that tells everyone that you're getting stronger and dominance is starting to take over, right? The way that you close, the way that you finish, that gets preached to you from the time you're playing Little League football all the way up through. And they closed them out with a big-time performance down the stretch. So for the Bucs, it may not be too late to salvage their season as the win moves them to 2-5 and five now on the year.